Welcome to Influence, Persuasion, and Negotiation. I'm Lorraine Aguilar, your instructor for the course, and our first uh, narrated video lecture is establishing why this course is important and why it's more especially important during this time in our society's history. As you all know, we're well into the information age, some call it the knowledge age, and many changes socioeconomically, technologically, have increased our interdependence uh, in the way we rely on each other to get things done, whether it's innovating the next application, whether it's the way our financial markets are balanced, whether it's just getting things done. People work differently together today than they did a generation ago. And that has a lot of influence on the kind of skills that we need to get things done. Some of the specific changes that affect what we do in this class in terms of influencing, persuading, and negotiating people is, first of all, organizations are different. A couple generations ago, horizontal organizations were almost non-existent. Now we have all kinds of organizations from Zappos to uh, self-managing teams at Google and other organizations that rely on a lot of agility and decision making at lower levels. So the, the traditional hierarchical pyramid of going up and down the chain of command to get things done is too slow for today's modern organizations. And so organizations that are built on large hierarchies are actually struggling to stay relevant. They're struggling to stay agile and responsive to their changing environment. That shift in organizational structure, of course, has shifted a shift in decision making. As I had mentioned before, the power is being pushed further and further down in the organization towards a more collaborative decision making model. Instead of the old days when the manager or leader usually was the smartest person in the room or the one who had the most knowledge, now our issues that we work with are so complex that rarely it's the manager that has all the answers. It's usually someone in the team that has the answers, or it could even be someone from a different team or even a different company that might have the best contribution. So more and more decisions are needing to be made based on influence rather than command and control. Uh, also, the source of knowledge needed to make good decisions, wise decisions, may not always rest within your team. Uh, again, this is really about managing a lot more information and a lot more moving parts than the way business used to operate, again, a generation or two ago. So with that shift in decision making, we also have a shift in power. I would like to believe, and I invite you to believe with me, that organizations are moving in the direction of power over structures to power with structures. And this isn't just the way we work together, it's, it's the way we raise our children, even. Um, I, I, maybe some of you who are my age, uh, were probably raised in the era of why do you do something? Well, because your mother or father told you to do so. There was a time when employees did something because their boss told them to do so. Not so much anymore. Now if you see parents rationing with their children, they're ex explaining the reasons why. Now, that might be a little controversial, but you probably see it a lot more in society than you did a generation ago, certainly more than two generations ago. Why are we doing something? Here's the rationale. I want you to buy in and do things willingly based on choice instead of compliance. And so it is with employees. Employees more and more are insisting on work that's meaningful for them and work where they can actually see or somehow connect with their impact. I remember very fondly uh, working with uh, the internal IT department at uh, Merck Pharmaceuticals some years, uh, a few years back. And I was very impressed with how these people who are developing software within the organization were so connected to the mission of the organization. 
that even in the way they develop software, they see themselves as contributing in their own way to improving the, the life and the well-being of the people they serve. So it's interesting that even someone who might sit behind the desk in a computer all day still can have an emotional and psychological connection with the customer. So this all supports a more power with orientation towards how we work together and how we get things done. No longer is it enough just to do things because you have to, because you should, because you were told to do so, and doing things out of a sense of compliance. Now we do things because we are engaged, because we buy into things. And again, that supports why we need to be influential. So in summary from these last few points, we are living in a very interdependent world. And to succeed in this interdependent world, new skills are needed, particularly the skills of influence over control, of persuasion rather than command. And in negotiation, a more partnership and collaborative approach as co-problem solvers rather than the adversarial approach of winner and loser. As you read the book, Getting to Yes, you'll notice the terms positional bargaining versus principal negotiation. And these terms reflect the movement from traditional negotiation strategies that were adversarial based, where there's a winner and a loser, to a partnership base, where both people dig deep to find their mutual interests and find the best way possible to find a satisfying outcome to those interests. So at that, uh, I invite you to enjoy this first week, enjoy the readings, and uh, hope you enjoy the quiz, and welcome to the course.